All right, so we're continuing our exploration of how to graph exponential functions. What I would like you guys to do in Desmos right now, just as a quick little review, I'd like you guys to write f of x. So follow along with me. Just be involved in the process. That's all I'm asking. Just, just be involved. f of x equals 2 to the power of x. Okay. So there's your. this is your basic um, exponential function with base 2. All right. What I'd like you guys to do right now is I'd like you to do what would happen if I said f of x minus 1. What do you guys notice happened from the red to the blue graph? What would you guys say? Went to the right 1, correct? So look what happens if over here, if I typed in, um, I'm going to do g of x. Go ahead and get, do with me. g of x equals 2 to the power, and open up little parentheses, and put x minus 1. Close parentheses. There we go. Let's just check, let's check something out here. So right now, if we do this right here, what do you notice about the blue and the green? They're the same. This is letting you know that what are you doing with the graph? You're shifting it to the right one unit. What is this letting us know? That we actually have shifted it with a, it's basically in its own equation. So these are the exact same. So let's like, take a look at our, our function here. This says, this says 1 minus x, right? That says 1 minus x. It's kind of hard to see, so I'll go ahead and write this down. It says negative 1 times 2 to the power. I'm going to put in parentheses 1 minus x, all right, plus 6. But I'd like you to rewrite it like this. Negative 1 times 2, open parentheses, put negative x plus 1. And if I factor out this negative, if I factor out this negative right here, you're going to be left with x minus one, because just remember, a negative times a negative equals a positive. So I want us to kind of separate some things so we know what's happening inside of the the graph. What I want you to understand, we're actually still going to shift it one unit to the right, but what do I have right outside of that parentheses right there? A negative. So what does that mean is happening in the graph? That means it's being reflected across what? Does anybody remember what this means? Yeah, that's being reflected across what axis? That's being reflected across the y-axis. So let's see. If you, if you write this down, that's great. Let's see. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the 6 is supposed to be after the right. I'm sorry. 6 is supposed to be right down there. My apologies. There we go. Okay. So right now, we're, I'm factoring that out. Let's go back to our graphing calculator. Right here, let's go back to Desmos. Let's see if this works here. You guys ready? So right now, I'm going to change this. Ready? I'm going to change this. I'm going to put negative x. Okay? And over here, I'm going to change this. I'm going to put negative x and see if that means the same thing. So what happens when you put a negative even up here in the exponential realm? It still is doing what? It's still reflecting across what axis? The y axis. Over here, if I put plus 1, does everybody understand? Like, wait, you put plus and it moved to the right. What did I say these were equal to? So here's, let's do another, let's do h. Do h of x. So you guys can see it's the same thing. Do you remember when I said we factored something out? What did I factor out? If, you're, if you did write it down, what did I factor out? I factored out a negative, and then I put x minus 1. So what I'm hoping that you guys see by me taking the time and doing it, instead of me just telling you, I want your brains to see that these two are exactly the same. So this, by factoring out the negative, what have I done? I've let you guys know it still does shift to the right one unit. So 
If f of negative x reflects across the y-axis, what does this negative f of x do? What does that do? Reflects across the x-axis. Did everybody see that negative 1 that's sitting out there right there? Okay, that basically that's, what, that's our a value, that's that negative 1. So if I go back to Desmos, all right, and all I'm going to do right now is what if I put a negative right there? And then I put right here, I put a negative, and I put a negative. Does everybody see how these stay these stay the, the same from our original function? But if I put a negative here, oops, sorry. Okay. This one here is what's happening right here. It's being reflected across what axis? The blue and the red, what's it reflecting across? The x-axis, okay? And if I do this one, it's reflecting across the x-axis and the y-axis, all right? So what I want you guys to understand is how you're actually, how this equation is being built. What did we say yesterday about that positive 6? What does that positive 6 do? That either moves it up or up or down. So I put plus 6, and I put plus 6, you'll still see this is your, this is going to be your final, your final answer. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that out, clear that out. If we wanted to make a graph of this, so I'm going to delete something real quick. I'm going to delete that and put one, negative 1 times that, negative 1 times that. What I want you guys to see is I want you guys to see that's that's our that's our equation right there. So how do we get a table? Just make a table. And we have to choose two ordered pairs. What would be two easy ordered pairs to plot? 0, 4, and what? 1 and uh, 5. So on mine, what is this this horizontal axis? I can't get it above it, right? So what would I have to do? Take my points and move them below it. Then I can set this. And where is that positive 6 going to be? That's my horizontal asymptote. All right. Just know in Desmos, okay? In Desmos, I cannot, if I were to try to copy and paste this, even you could even use y equals, if I do negative 1 times 2 and you raise it to a certain power, what do you have to do in Desmos in order to keep it up there? You got to open up a parentheses. And you'll see you can just type it in nice and neat and you still get the, you still get the same ordered pair. So we have 0 4 and 1 n Five. So it's going to be important. I go 0, 4, but I got to do a 1 and a, oop, that's 2 and a 5. 0, 4, 1 and 5. So how many transformations happen in this thing? What does that negative right there do? That, that reflects it across the x-axis. What does the negative there do? Reflect it across the y-axis. It shifted how many units to the right? It shifted one unit to the right, then it went up six. There's actually four transformations going on. So this one right here, let's take a look at this. And what we're going to do is without without even, we'll, we'll use Desmos to graph it. But what I'd like you guys to do is just write down y equals 2 to the power of x and then put y equals 3 times 2, x minus 4 plus 2. We're going to talk about the transformations. Just write down the new equation and we're going to talk about the things that are happening. I'm going to highlight the important parts, okay? We got this part right here. We got this part right here. And we have this part right there. So if you had to name the three transformations, but one, two, three. So this three right here, that's dealing with this thing called A times 
f of x. Okay, so what is that being? Okay, so put stretch vertically. Stretch vertically, and to shorten it, just put by 3. All right. Um, what about this? I'm going to put f of x minus 4. What would we say that's happening there? Go into the right 4. And then with the last thing we have is f. I'll change colors here. We have f of x plus 2. And so we're just going what? Up 2. And what is this 2 right here going to represent in an exponential function? That's going to represent what's called our horizontal asymptote. So our horizontal asymptote is at y equals a 2. That's our horizontal asymptote. Okay, so let's think about this. If our original function right here, this 2 to the power of x, if I plug in a 0 right here, if I plug in a 0, that would be at 0, and 2 to the power of 0 is 1. So you would see a 0, 1, and you can clearly see right here, well, it's kind of hard to see, but that point right there is actually at a 0, 1. So let's take a look at our new graph. If I go to the 4, if I go 4 right and up 2 from that point, if I go 4 right and up 2, what would be my new ordered pair? From 0, 1. 4 right, I would be at a what? All right. Okay. So basically, if I plug in, how about this? We'll, we'll take a look at this. Let's go and type it into Desmos. So right here, first thing I want you to type into Desmos is y equals 2 to the power of x. Next thing I want you to type in is y equals 3 times. 2 to the power, put parentheses, make sure you put parentheses, what are we going to type in? x minus 4. We'll close it, and we'll go to the right, and what are we going to do? We're going to go up 2. Okay? So right here, we are at a 0, 1. If I go to the right 4 and up 2, what point should I be at. What do you guys see? A 4 and a 5, and you see a what? What's another point I could possibly plot? There's a 4 and a 5. So we can also have a 5 and an 8. So we're looking for a 4 and a 5, and a 5 and an 8. So right now, of these graphs, which one appears to have, say, a 4 and a 5 and a 5 and all the way up at an 8? Looks like B is part, probably our close, closest. Okay, so let's see. If we, if we were to zoom in, I'm at 4. Where am I at right there? About four and a three. This one right here, I'm at a four, and I would say that's at a five. All right, we'll choose that one. If we go back to our work real quick, let me see here. If we go back, where's my? Okay, so we had a 4 and we had a 5. I want to make sure you guys know how we got to the 4 and 5 in our new equation, all right? If you go 4 units to the right, all right, and you go up 2 units from where we originally started, what is it also being multiplied by? It's being multiplied by a 3. So when you guys plug in, when you plug in different numbers, what is 4 minus 4? It's what? 4 minus 4 is 0. Okay? So right now, I want you to understand how we got to the 5. 
what is 2 to the power of 0? 2 to the power of 0 is 1. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. So I want to make sure you guys know if you had to plug things in, how you would plug things in. So if you plug in a 4 right there, that becomes 2 to the power of 0. 2 to the power of 0 is a 1. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. That's how you get the 4 and the, the 5 in the exponential. So, one thing, in exponential functions, what are you always going to have? A horizontal asymptote. In logarithmic functions, what are you going to always have? What do we call this? Vertical asymptote. Okay? So, right now, does everybody see that it has log base 2 right here? What I'd like you guys to do in Desmos is I want you guys to clear this out, and I want you guys to go to your logarithms now. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to type in f of x. We're only doing two problems, and that's it. Equals. Now, to get a logarithm, I want you everybody to understand, to get a logarithm, hit the little functions bar, go to miscellaneous, click right here where you have, where you can change your base. And we're putting a base 2 to start out with. Okay. If I type in negative f of x, what do you guys notice about our logarithms? They're being reflected across the x-axis. If I type in a negative here, what's happening with our logarithms now? Going across the, the y-axis. So what do you guys think is happening in our graph right here? Where's the negative? Is it on the outside or the inside? It's on the outside. So this is dealing with the negative being on the outside. Okay? Also, one more thing. Is this being shifted at all? What would you guys say? Shifted two units to the left? Okay, let's think, let's think about this. Here we go. So if I wanted to shift this two units to the left, I'd put x plus on x plus 2. So let's go ahead and type in our new function here. The function that we have to graph in the Khan Academy is y equals, there's a negative sign, there's a function, it's a logarithm, there's a 2, and then we type in an x. Okay? So one second here. Let me delete this. Oh, wait. My bad. Keep that right there. What did I have right here? I had an x what? x plus 2. What do you guys notice about the black and the red? They're the same. This is how you kind of write it as the, basically what you guys have to interpret what's happening in the graph. This is your actual function. Okay, so when you're dealing with transformations, if you start with this, I want you to understand these mean the same thing. Whereas the negative reflects across the x-axis, x plus 2 is shifted two units to the left. So how many points do you guys need? You need two solid points. Does anybody know where the vertical asymptote would be? If we shifted it two units to the left, where's our vertical asymptote? X equals negative two. So right here, guys, in this problem, what I would like you guys to write is I need you guys to write down that this right here represents your vertical asymptote. you got to know when and where to find your vertical asymptote. And your vertical asymptote is either going to go left or right. The horizontal goes up and down. The vertical goes left or right. So if you see x plus 2, you know it's going to go two units to the, the left. If I put x plus 3, then what would happen? It would go three units to the left. If I said x minus 7, what would happen? It would go seven units to the, the right. So just make sure you guys know whether it's going left or right. You don't have to worry about it being up or down. Okay? So we got to draw that in. So in this one right here, I have to take this right here, and i got to move it over what? Move it over right there. The other part, what do I want you to be able to do? Just find your table. So I'm going to go ahead and um, clear this off and clear this off. This is our actual function. Make a table. So I can use what two ordered pairs? I could use negative 1, 0. I can also use what? 2, negative 2. Or you could use 0 and negative 1. So negative 1, 0. Let's take a picture of that. 
negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. Negative 1, 0, and what was the other one? 0, negative, oh, oh, 0, negative 1. And you should be, once you get those two points perfectly on, they should feel good about your answer. Okay? Last question we're doing. This is it. And I'll let you guys work on your own. Golly, there's lots of stuff happening in this graph. Okay? So the first thing I want you to do, this is log of 2. We started off, our original function was log base 2 of x. That's your original function. Okay? So I'm going to highlight the important things. So the first thing I'd like you to do is I need you guys to factor out something with me, please. To get 4 minus x, could you please rewrite it as negative x plus 4, like that? 4 minus x, I want you to rewrite it as negative x plus 4. And last, but not least, we're going to factor out a negative. There we go. All right, so I'm going to highlight what's happening in our uh, in our graph. We have this happening. We have this happening. And we have this happening right here. All right. Hold on. One more thing. Negative 2. I've got to separate that. That's separate from this. My apologies. There we go. We got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we're going to go into each, I'm going to color code each one of these, all right? We're going to color code what the blue means. We're going to color code what the, I don't know, periwinkle? I don't know, periwinkle. The red. And finally, the last thing, the orange. So kind of get kind of get a space for you guys. We're going to go over those four things. All right. So right now we're going to start with this negative on the outside. So this is dealing with this concept called negative f of x. And we have negative f of x that reflects it across the x axis. Reflects it across the x axis. All right. What does that 2 do? Yeah, so that stretches it vertically. I'm just going to put by 2. All right. This negative on the inside, what does the negative right there on the inside do? Okay. So that deals with this concept called f of negative x, which reflects it across the y-axis. And last but not least, we have x minus 4. And what does that x minus 4 do? It moves it to the right 4 units. Okay, so let's put this f of x minus 4. We're going to put right. It moves it to the right. Four, four units. So there's a lot of things happening in the graph, okay? On your test, you're going to have to be able to look at this and identify the different things that are happening in the, in the graph, even without graphing it, like what's, what's happening. So being able to identify, oh, that's a vertical stretch, or that's a horizontal compression, that type of stuff, okay? So let's see if all of this, let's see if all of this happens when we, when we type it in, okay? So if you would, please, sorry if I'm blocking your view, if you would, please, what I'd like you guys to do is I'd like you to, we're going to type all of this in exactly as it appears, and then we're going to type it the way I typed it in there, see if they match. If they match, that means we did, I factored everything correctly, okay? So we're going to start with this one. So we're going to go to Desmos, okay? I'm going to clear this out, clear this out. It's going to put Y equals, and I think it was what, negative 2, and then we had a log. Ours was what, base 2? Okay. 
And then inside of it, what did it say? Did it say 4 minus x? 4 minus x. Okay. So there's our... So our, what would be the like the original function that we're basing it off of? Just put... Uh, yeah. So if you would, just put log base 2 of x. So right now, this is the original function. We've done a lot of transformations. Now I converted this to y equals, we had a negative 2. We also had log base 2. Now on, on this inside, I put what? I put a negative. I opened up a parentheses, and what did I do? x minus and what do you guys notice about the black and the blue, besides your brains hurting being black and blue right now from having to listen to me? All right, I'm looking at some of your eyes, and I'm sorry that you feel so much pain and anguish from going over this, okay? But if you just pay attention, it might, you know, it'll get over it. I'm almost done. It's like a Rocky movie. Eventually, it, it's over, okay? All right, so does everybody see how we did? What did I, what does this prove to you that I did? I did, I factored everything out perfectly. So does this go four units to the right? It does. If it goes four units to the right, what does that tell us about our vertical asymptote? It's at x equals what? Four. So if you know how to shift everything perfectly, you know how to find your vertical asymptote. So what's the number one most important thing that you got to be able to find for a logarithmic function when you're graphing it? You need to know how to locate your what? Vertical asymptote and, and the exponential function, you got to be able to locate your horizontal asymptote. Because if you don't plot those correctly, then everything else is in utter failure. Okay? So, right now, let's look at a couple of points and then we're done. All right? So, here we go. So, I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to clear this out. We're just focusing on this. Let's find a couple of, couple of points. What two points am I going to use to make sure I check it and get it right? 0, negative 4, and 2n, negative 2. Okay, so here we go. 0 and negative 4, and 2 and negative 2. Is this at 0, negative 4? Is that at 2n, negative 2? That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, does it look like there's a vertical asymptote right there at a 4? It does, doesn't it? Okay. So that one... That one basically confirms to me that that's got to be, okay? So right now, I'm not going to do this one all the way from beginning to end, but what would be the first step that I would want you to be able to, to do on this problem? Find the, find the vertical asymptote. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to factor out the negative, oops, sorry, hold on. What would this become? It would become an x plus 3. So what does that tell you about my vertical asymptote? It's going to be at x equals negative 3. So that'd be the very first thing that you want to be able to locate is locate your vertical asymptote. So even before I type it into Desmos, I'm like, I'm going to put that vertical asymptote right there at a negative 3. Then you can type it into Desmos and find a couple of ordered pairs. So you got to find what makes this equal to what? What makes that equal to 0? And that gives you your vertical asymptote. All right, all right. If you're having problems sleeping, just watch this video, and it should put you to sleep. There you go.